Big day today, guys. Let's talk breaking in your new motorcycle. But what if you don't have a new motorcycle? Do you still need to break it in? What if I told you everything you needed to know was inside this book that no one ever reads? New bike, old bike, let's discuss breaking in a motorcycle. All right, I'm gonna expand on this just a little bit since some of you probably haven't read it. Your salesman did tell you how to break your engine in, but he also told you like 30,000 other things in a 15 minute time span. So I'll elaborate. For those of you that don't know me, my name is John Maxwell and I'm a highly trained unprofessional right here at Chattahoochee Harley Davidson. And on this channel, I bring you guys to work with me. So if you wanna learn more about Harley, you should hit the subscribe button right now. Now, whether you read it or not, the owner's manual says to keep the vehicle speed below 3000 RPM for the first 50 miles. The sales guy might've even worded it something like under 50 for 50. Now this part is probably just as much as you getting used to the bike is breaking in parts. I mean a little bit of parts we'll talk about in a minute, but I should point out that it's a good idea to, you know, anytime you get a new bike or even if it's a used bike, you know, take it a little easy at first. Um, not a bad idea if you change handlebars, shocks, wheel sizes, anything like that to get yourself used to the bike. I think that's an important part of the first 50 under 50. Now the total break in though is 500 miles. So after you've completed the first 50, for the next 450 miles, just keep engine speed below 3,500 RPM. And vary your vehicle speed too. Don't just hop on the interstate, do a 500 mile trip at 80 miles per hour, two states over for, I don't know, whatever you might be doing. You know, ride through town, do some country road traveling, 20, 25 miles tops, you know, vary the speed a little bit. So exactly what does under 3,500 miles per hour even feel like? How Sunday driver do you have to be? Well, obviously my bike is already broken in at 2,300 miles, but I was really curious while I was, you know, that initial 500 miles, what does that feel like? So, on all of your new Big Twins and Sportsters and such, you can press the trip button here and cycle through to get to your RPM or tachometer. And, well, we'll check out some vehicle speeds, some RPM speeds that get you what vehicle speed you, you'll yell. Yeah. In first gear, I'm going to shift about 3,000 RPM, which is about 30 miles an hour. Second gear, I can get up to 3,000 RPM at about 30 miles an hour. Third gear, I'm doing about 45 at 3,000 RPM. In fourth gear, I'm officially speeding at 60 miles an hour in fourth gear. I'm gonna have to get on the interstate. cruising at 55 miles per hour at 2800 3,000 is 60 miles an hour shift it fifth gear is 2600 at 60 miles an hour and if traffic would move along we could continue our testing so I'm doing 70 miles per hour at 3,000 RPM, give or take. So I'm on the I'm on the interstate. I'm not even in sixth gear yet. I'm not ready to click into one-to-one -one drive ratio. That's for a different video. So I'm officially moving with traffic at an interstate type speed of 75 miles per hour in sixth gear at 2,700. So in short, basically, somewhere between old lady and straight up hooligan and you're okay i think the the biggest part to me is varying the engine rpms not just like 100 percent thrall everywhere you know there's don't like 3500 3500 30, you know like let the engine move around 
in the RPM range. But there's more to it than just the engine. That's, you know, pistons and cylinders, you know, becoming friends. That's why we do the 3500 RPM thing. But there's more to break in than just that. And there's, even if you have an older bike, there's things to break in. Like brake pads, for instance. Even older bikes get new brake pads. Um, they're metal, kind of rough. Brake rotors. Uh, well, this one's old. I didn't have a new one to show you guys. But the Harley uses metal brake pads, I should mention too. It's uh, called Centered. It's, you know, they have ceramic and organic and things like that too. But stock Harley stuff is going to be metal on metal, creating friction, slowing the bike down, yada yada. That's how brakes work. My point though is that, uh, remember that first 50 under 50? That's actually not a bad idea to keep your brakes working better, even if you have an older model too. Maybe not under 50, but certainly, um, well, the faster you're traveling, the faster you're braking. And it's a good idea to brake the two surfaces in, you know, brake pads and rotors. Uh, one of the reasons why when you do rotors, you do pads, so that you have two new, flat, perfectly good surfaces to go together. And I should probably add two while we're talking about it. This rotor is blue because of heat. It didn't have time to cool back down before it just kept on getting more and more brakes. The, essentially when they're blue like that and the pads can get slick, that's called glazing over or the brakes have become glazed, air quotes. Anyway, speaking of friction and stuff, another important thing to think about when you're breaking stuff in new or old is clutch plates see they're actually called friction plates even they go friction plate steel plate friction plate steel plate and so on and so forth but the way they work is essentially when the clutch is engaged they're all together um, grabbing a hold of each other and transferring engine power to the transmission you know, and the engine's always running, so if you want to relieve pressure from the transmission, you pull in the clutch lever and it disengages. So if that's how it works, and the higher RPM you're traveling, the more these are frictioning. That's not a thing. But anyway, the faster the engine's going, the harder these are working to, you know, transfer that power from engine to transmission. So it's not a bad idea to, you know, be a little easier on your clutch in the very beginning of well your new bike or your new clutch in your old bike depending on what your situation is it's probably unnecessary to say so but in your brand new clutch or new bike um the friction zone the spot where the clutch isn't engaged or disengaged it's kind of halfway there burnouts uh speed shifting stuff like that you should probably avoid those things to you know prolong the life of your new clutch To see what else we can find to uh you know for new things that need to be broken in so welcome to the upstairs hopefully y'all can kind of see me that's well that's as good as it's gonna get so we keep a lot of takeoff parts let me see if i can all right, one thing to keep in mind with that clutch is the clutch cable itself. Not a whole lot of models still come with a clutch cable. My Heritage did though, your Sportsters do. And even if you have an older model, you might be replacing cables during a handlebar job or because they break or whatever. But, see that cable? See, it's actually a bunch of wires twisted together to make the cable itself. So, they're pretty much spend their whole life trying to untwist. So a brand new one is generally the only time that I really find a big difference. But for a new bike that first thousand miles, you solve that with a clutch adjustment. For a new handlebar job on an older bike, you might not be up for service too soon, so you might forget about it. But if you get a bunch of slop in your clutch lever, it's because your cable is stretched. That's an actual thing. I, I think people might mistake that term, you know, your cable stretching, think it's a bunch of BS, but it's legit and it can 
Well, it can make you burn your clutch out because when you pull that lever in, there's not enough travel in the pack to totally separate and, you know, what we were just talking about. Then you're in the friction zone, even when you're stopped at stop light, the clutch would burn up and then you cost you a fortune. What do you do? Obviously, new bikes have new tires, but so do older bikes too. Uh, depending on the model, every eight to 12,000 miles. So they come with a some sort of compound on them for the manufacturing process to like help separate the mold from the machine or something. I don't know, that's what one commenter told me during the FXDR video because I mentioned it in there about how the tire was seemed extra slick. Check this out. Hopefully that transferred into the camera that that one you can tell has some excessive stuff on it. But anyway, that first 50 under 50, not a horrible idea with a new set of tires because they can be a little extra slick. So even for you guys with older bikes, especially when it's been raining, be careful on a new set of tires. Kind of gradually bring them to a, you know, temperature and stuff. So new bike or old bike, that's just a couple of the things that I think you need to break in other than just the engine. Although the engine is really important and probably the most expensive thing that if you do it wrong, then boy, you're screwed quite frankly. Anyway though, I don't think I mentioned why I had the clutch out or the brakes out, but the clutch, I usually suggest to my customers that they take it easy for about 500 miles. The brakes, the, the owner's manual actually states 200 miles break-in for the brake pads and rotors. Yeah, so all things to think about. Before I tell you my next thing, I do want a little bit of a spoil alert. Right out there, getting ready to go in the dyno room is, well, my bike. Because, well, a couple weeks ago I told you I didn't know if I wanted to do handlebars or pipes first. Well, <laughs> yeah. We're going to the dining room. So that's what's coming up on the channel. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a big dirty thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button, tap the bell notification so that you know when I upload. If you hadn't gotten your fix yet, there's a video here and here you can check out. And otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Go to the shop. I'm going to film. Uh,